<laughs> What's going on, everybody? I'm Des. This I'm is Carol. Welcome to Fearless Creative, where we talk about whatever the fuck we want to talk about. Typically surrounding being creative as artists and learning to get deeper into that type of thing. Would you say? Typically? Yeah, and breaking through the barrier of fear, the things that hold us back. Yes. And not to say we are fearless, but it's something we work towards and experience from time to time. And, uh, in moments. In moments. Very extremely <laughs> brief moments. And this is, this is our first video version, uh, if this indeed does go out uh, as video. And we get to chat with our good friend Taylor Murray today. Taylor, how you doing? I'm doing great. Thanks for asking. How are you doing? Pretty good. Pretty good. I got a frosty beer. We got a glass of wine. frosty. We're doing all right. In my mason jar glass. Yeah. That's I how like classy that. I am. It's class. <laughs> I have water in this spirally cup. Okay. Yeah. Not quite Super as fun, fancy. but it'll do. Yeah. It'll do. <laughs> <laughs> I also have some snap peas, I think. Ooh. <clears throat> We've got yeah. triscuits as well. <laughs> that kicks my snap peas ass, so. <laughs> but I only like the original triscuits. Yes, the original triscuits are the only triscuits as far as I'm concerned. All these when other I, weird flavors, as soon as you look at the box, it, like if you look at a box of ordinary Triscuits, you'll see one, two, three wheat ingredients, three ingredients on there, whole wheat, vegetable oil, sea salt. That three sounds ingredients, safe. all of which you understand. Yes, you can picture those in your mind. And as soon as you pick up the other ones, it'll have this the whole pile of other stuff, including monosodium glutamate, and this weird one that's just four letters that I don't even know what they stand for. And even though we're all about being creative, don't fuck with the Triscuits. That's all I'm saying. I okay? can add <laughs> rosemary and garlic oil if I want to it. Uh, just do a really funny commercial. Uh, Get creative with, with that, not the ingredients. Right. <laughs> don't mess with my Triscuit, man. So Taylor, what are you up to these days? What am I up to? I am kind of in a weird place right now, actually. I've been doing my business, which mm -hmm. is functional accessories. Yeah, tell so, us a bit about that, too. So I started making and marketing musical instrument accessories about two years ago, starting with Akuskins, which are fabric covers to protect and personalize your guitar. So there's all these different styles, and they'll fit any size acoustic. So those are pretty cool. And then from there, I kind of expanded into a couple other accessories, like fun picks and colored strings and stuff like that. Nice. And the past month or so, I've kind of been looking into releasing a new product in a totally different direction, which is my music. Ah, yes, yes. And in fact, if, if all goes as planned, you and I will probably get together and work on that a little bit. Yes, I think so. <clears throat> Which should be a blast. <laughs> I think that would work out really well. Looking forward to hearing it. I've only heard one of your tunes, uh, and I, I think I've only heard you do it once, and I'm, now she sings it. <laughs> the feels. <laughs> yes, I've been covering this song. I love this tune, and I've been covering it all over the place. In fact, a lot of people that see us live have been seeing us lately. Um, the people that watch us on Periscope and Busker have got to see it a couple of times. Yep. And it always gets a great reaction. It's a good tune. I love That's that so tune. That's so cool. <clears throat> Which, and Carol and I were talking the other night, too, that it sounds like a perfectly licensable tune as well. So that's the whole other thing we can talk about, should that come up. <laughs> no, see, I think that's a perfect segue mm. into the topic du jour, right. which is about being a sellout and, and what, it, what it means to be a sellout and, and should you try to avoid being a sellout if you're an artist or all this mm -hmm. sort of stuff. And is there such a thing? That's, that's the question I'd like to drop on the table. <laughs> you know? Yeah, I'm not, I, don't, I don't believe in selling out because I never bought in. Uh, there you go. That's a tweetable right there. Hashtag. <laughs> yeah, I would like to know where, like, and I don't know if either of you know, where that expression kind of came from. The sellout? Like, when did people start calling other artists sellouts? It's hard to say, but my theory, personally, with no research or anything, is jealousy. <laughs> yeah. um, I think it started sometime in the 60s, at which point people were paying for radio play. Mm, payola. Yeah. Yeah, and, maybe. And I think a sellout was somebody who had, like, basically heard somebody else's song, made a record of it, paid to have it done real quick, paid to get it out on the radio paid to get that that instant success but isn't that like any other kind of business yeah more or less it's weird though when you get when you get artists because artists is kind of an amorphous sort of you, you, someone that's not supposed to care about money that that's that's 
and, and, line. And there That's ain't nothing exactly wrong with not caring line. about money. If you'd rather, you know, do your arts, whatever it is, music, painting, whatever you do, and then, you know, on the side and work a day job to get your bills paid and get your family took, taken care of, then that's entirely acceptable. See, no, but in the, in the like, artists, in, in the people who, like, have this artist idea in their head, they don't even want their artists to take care of business or pay their bills. They want them to, to die in a gutter and starve to death <laughs> while no one likes them and only be recognized <laughs> after they've long since been dead. Well, to each his own, I suppose. <laughs> and, and it's like, well, great. I don't want to be that person. <laughs> no. No. You want to be well, an artist? Go cut off your ear. <laughs> <laughs> well, we, we talked a little bit about, Carol, the, the starving artist kind of idea. And that if you're not a starving artist, if you're somehow making money off of your music or your art, and I, I, sh I would like to point out that like, even the artists Facebook group, the Facebook group, it was something like angry at ukulele people who sell it their was, music to commercials or something like that. It was a petition to ban whimsical ukulele music. Yes, <laughs> we don't want people making happy music anymore. No, we certainly They're selling don't want out. them making money off of it. Gosh darn it. <laughs> Something to make people happy? I forbid it. Yeah, yeah. Humbug. Kill them all. Burn the witch. <laughs> Break their ukuleles. <laughs> you were about to ma drop a point there, Taylor. Sorry, yeah. I think I remember what it was. Um, so, oh, there was like a couple, and then I got tangled up into one. Uh, I'm going to work from the inside out, so the deeper I went towards the shell where I started. If that makes any sense to anybody but me. Um, <laughs> Bye, Carol. <laughs> <laughs> See ya. Um, I oh like even even artists of other media, mm -hmm. there seems to be this like disconnect with musicians specifically. Like there was a a woman I know who was having an arts night, and she wanted uke or ukulele, um, like an acoustic performance for mm -hmm. like three hours, and she was charging people to attend this evening. But she wanted the music on a volunteer basis. Uh -huh. And to me, this was like, you know this, like, this world. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Like, it's, it's, it's different kind of art. Like, she did, like, visual art. Right. But it's, it's really all the same. Like, do you want to just give me your paintings? Yeah. <laughs> it's great exposure. That's right. <laughs> <laughs> no, I'll, guess what? I'll come out and do three hours stint for you, but I expect a painting at the end of it. Oh, yeah. That's <laughs> yeah. right. That's fair. A yeah. good one, too, motherfucker. That's all I'm saying. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I tried to pay my landlord my rent with exposure, and it didn't go over so good. No. <laughs> <clears throat> uh, yeah, it's interesting. Um, I don't know. I don't. I personally don't really believe that there is such a thing as selling out. I mean, unless... Unless you are doing something that feels like it's going against your own integrity, you know, then perhaps, you know, maybe there's a discussion there, right? Now, do you think there there are artists who kind of operate without integrity, where, where it's like they're not selling out because um, they never really had a grounding in the first place? Perhaps. I mean, I think there are people of all walks of life that operate without integrity, including yeah. artists and musicians and so forth, right? So yeah. that's bound to that's bound to be true for some. But um, I don't know. It's I, I I honestly believe that if if you can uh, if you're passionate about the art that you create and you've figured out a way to have somebody pay you to do that art, then I think that's a win win, and you're you got your golden ticket right there. As far as I'm concerned, yeah. call it what you will. You know, if you write yeah. a song for somebody for a particular purpose, maybe it's an advertisement or a TV show or whatever, then you've written a song and you've sold it to somebody or licensed it to somebody. I can still go home and write whatever sad, brooding relationship song I feel like <laughs> when I'm done, and I can record and that and release it to my fans. Sometimes they're not mutually exclusive. Sometimes exactly. Yeah, <laughs> they work for both. Yeah. Did you watch the um, the interview I did with Kathy Heller? I have not yet. Oh, I'll send, I'll send um, you a link. It's really it's on interesting. My list. She's um, okay. um, licensing kind of expert. That's that's what she does. She is a six figure earner as a as a songwriter, and um, and she writes music and gets it licensed in in ad, ad campaigns, TV, movie, you know, these types of things, right? She's like uh, she's like I'm the uh, I think to paraphrase, she's like I'm the most successful musician you've never heard of. <laughs> <Right>? <laughs> that is exactly what I want my career title to be. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> since I've been dreaming of that since I was a little kid. Yeah. 
no paparazzi or anything like that. Just no, no one recognizes you, but yet the bank account is full, the bills get paid, you know. And if you're like me, just beer in the fridge, you know. <laughs> These are important. <laughs> I've I've really wanted to hear a song that I wrote on the radio. Mm. Mm. Not me singing it though. Like <clears throat> not you singing not, it. Ah. No. no. Okay. So getting your tunes to other artists. Yeah. <laughs> Interesting. Now, what if, what if okay, because we're going to record and you're going to sing, right? Oh, yeah, yeah. Yeah, so so what if you get one of them tunes, either A, on the radio, or B, in a TV show, or, uh, or a commercial or something? I think that would be great. I, I think I was telling you about uh, Leah's class that I'm taking, called yes. The Online Musician. Yeah. And that's really interesting because it focuses on all the passive streams of income. Mm. And it is based on the premise that if you can't or don't want to tour, you don't have to. Right. And you can still be a successful musician or songwriter or recording artist without having to do all these gigs. And that's been like the biggest obstacle for me is that I, I'm not hugely interested in that part. Mm. Um, so I don't know. Her course has been like the perfect solution to my little problem, and I don't really know how that works. If a radio station or a TV show or a movie were to pick something up, if the demand for a tour would change? Not necessarily. Although, if you were going to play out, um, having a, sh- uh, a tune in an ad campaign will will give you that exposure. <laughs> yeah, most definitely. I know Kathy was talking about that. Uh, I forget who, but some. Oh, singer song um, Ingrid. Yeah, yeah. Ingrid, Ingrid Michaelson. Mendes. Yes. Yes, the one. My hero. Yeah, okay. Yeah. So uh, That's she was, how she got her first thing going was through licensing. Yeah, and all so the tune goes out in a commercial and all of a sudden her iTunes downloads spike, you know, and and there's people at her shows that weren't there before and you know, because uh, people heard the tune, they like the tune and they Google it and they look it up and who did that song and yada yada. And if I, I had never to do put that. Put the sweater on, you'd do. see all my goosebumps right now because yeah, Ingrid Michaelson's like my hero, and I didn't know that about her. Yeah, there you go. It's crazy. Yeah, I don't. I, I'm telling the story third party kind of thing. Uh, yeah, because I'm trying to re- relay what Kathy was telling me. But, but yeah, interesting, and it, and it can be done. So it can it can help if you do decide you want to go out and gig and tour and stuff yeah. like that. Then that will be helpful, but certainly not necessary. I don't think. To my understanding, the only way that you can absolutely get roped into touring is creating an album with a record company. Yes, if you're under contract. If you're under contract, you've made a record with a record company, you're going to tour it. And if you don't, you're going to wish you had, because you're going to be thousands of dollars in the hole. Hundreds yeah. of thousands of dollars Sued. in the hole. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, that's a whole other conversation, you know, the indie versus versus label artists and whatnot. Maybe we'll save that for another, mm. another chit-chat. Yeah. But... Um, yeah, I don't know. Like I say, I uh, I am of the opinion that, and I kind of said this earlier, that if if you are passionate about what you do, the, the the code to crack is to figure out how to sustain yourself financially while doing that thing, you know. And these days, it's there's so many different opportunities and things you can do, like like you're talking about, not really wanting to tour and the gigging part of it is not your primary focus, like it is definitely for you. Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> right. You know, there's so many other opportunities to get in front of people to, if you want to, A, either build an audience, or B, just make music that you can license, that you can sell to other people, right? Which doesn't require building an audience. You don't have to have a big fan base. You just have to know how to deliver what the music directors are looking for, right? Yeah. <clears throat> so there's lots of opportunities as far as I'm concerned, and I don't consider any of them to be selling out. <laughs> yeah, no, I, I, I think that... At least now, selling out is a term that we use to say that this person has success at something that we wish we could have had success at, and we're angry. We're angry at ourselves for not going for what they have. Yeah. On some level. Yeah. Actually, here's a here's a perspective. In in my opinion, I think you know if you're really passionate and you're a musician and you're writing all the time and that's what gets you through the day, and you decide to put that on the shelf and go work a day job, that's selling out to me. Yeah. <laughs> you know why I mean? is it okay to sell out an arena but not to sell, or to sell out an album but not to sell out? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I think that's where this whole thing began. Was, exactly. Was that like, magic question. Everybody wants to sell out an arena. Everybody wants to go triple platinum on an album, and yet no one wants to, to have to say, 
I sat around thinking about the dollars and cents of things and made sure that my tour was going to make money and <laughs> we penny pinched yeah. and we stayed in shitty hotels or whatever it is. Like, no yeah. one wants to hear that. It's not glamorous. It's not fun. Yeah, I think yeah. one of the big things a lot of artists struggle with is, is, especially when you're trying to make a career as an artist, indie or label aspirations or whatever, it doesn't matter, is that anything that you do as a quote unquote career is a business of some kind and you're either an employee or an entrepreneur and that's that's got not not just to do with art like anything that you do you know you have to pay the rent the mortgage put food on the table so you are Somehow. either an employee or an entrepreneur and as an and as an artist if if indeed you choose to pursue that as as your bread and butter then you kind of have to put on the entrepreneur ball cap and start thinking like a business owner, which means dollars and cents have to be accounted for, the tax man has to be accounted for, and so on and so forth. And you can't just, just be an artist, you know? Sit around making music in your studio with yeah. wine. In a toga with a big joint, you know? I don't know where that image came from, but... <laughs> like, there's... Apparently, you do songwriting differently than I do. <laughs> there's this book I've been reading very slowly over the past couple of months called To Sell is Human. Mm. Have either of yeah. you heard of that one? No, I no, haven't. I haven't. I started reading it. A friend suggested it to me because there were certain like ethical concerns I had around selling. And I like it's it's been really important to me to not sell something that people don't need or sure. that people don't want. Yeah. And to just like shove it down their throats and be like, take this and the greasy this, sa used uh, car salesman type of that's thing that's <laughs> exactly how the book starts is like this this whole figure that's kind of ingrained in our brains as a salesperson hey. yeah <laughs> <laughs> and Double it's basically guns. just kind of debunking that myth right and showing how like, like any any possible career that you choose you're involved in some kind of selling mm. and and that's just persuading people to part with resources whether it is time or money or mostly just time and money yeah yeah but um and that kind of that put the whole like artist thing into perspective for me too because i sell products to musicians and i'm hoping to sell music to musicians and non-musicians mm -hmm. and it's kind of like how do I find the people who really want this? Yeah. Versus just throwing a bunch of money at it. That is and indeed the challenge. Yeah. In fact, we've had this type of conversation many, many Man times. Um, and and one of the things that I think is selling, uh, like like you sort of intimated, is potentially um, viewed as coercion, right? Yeah. And when you're trying to sell something to somebody who doesn't either want or need it, then that's exactly what it is. It's you have to be coercive, you know. Um, and and however, marketing is finding the people that would benefit or enjoy or desire the thing that you have, and then just presenting it to them. You know, finding the market. If you do great marketing, you don't have to do very much selling at all. If you yeah. found the market, right? It's like if you have a massive migraine and I have a pill that gets rid of massive migraines, I don't have to sell that to you. I just have to find the people with the migraines and show it to them. <laughs> right? Yeah. Here it is. <laughs> you know what I mean? Yeah. And there's no coercion involved in that. There's no, there's no salesy salesmanship. Yeah, but it's a lot harder with music because as we've discussed before, it's not as easy to see the problem that you're solving. Mm -hmm. With migraine yeah. pills... I have a migraine, you have a pill. With the Kuskins, I have a guitar that I'd like to personalize and don't want to have to pay huge amounts of money to have a cruel-ass lacquer job done. You have a skin that'll do that and protect it at the same time. Like, there's a problem that we're solving here. Mm -hmm. Whereas music... Not so the much. The problem that we're solving is a very ephemeral one. Yeah, and it may be different for different people, you know? And, and different songs and different artists. And there's so much ambiguity in there as far as the actual problem solution which other businesses that sell other products uh, have that I advantage have, you and i have gone through that i argue that they're solving the problem of feeling disconnected perhaps in some fashion or another yeah. right but at the same time i mean if i have a sense of of disconnection or loneliness <laughs> or whatnot and i and i reached for music to help me with that 
I mean, you might reach for this piece of music, and I might reach for that piece of music, and it's still not black and white. You know? Oh, yeah. But, <clears throat> but the, in essence, that is the problem we're solving, is a different Perhaps. Perhaps. But it does make it hard to target, to find who are the people that are best going to enjoy or benefit from from my latest record. <laughs> you know? I don't know if I've ever met somebody who doesn't enjoy music, though. And, and I feel like it's just... It is an inherent need. It's mm. like, I think art is... Yeah, I met a lots of people that like don't want dishwashers or, or water, and mm. I maybe that's just as a musician, but I don't think I've ever met anybody who doesn't like music. And the cool thing about like contemporary music marketing is they can find those niches, and if you're on Spotify or Apple Music or or any kind of like streaming or digital platform, it can kind of categorize you based on. Um, I guess your genre mm-hmm. and your and your niche, so it's easier to reach the people who would actually enjoy your music right. because they enjoy artists like you. That's it's true. It's just hard to identify. And oftentimes, it's it can be challenging unless you have a very distinct genre. Like if you play, you know, death metal, then you play Whimsical death metal. Whimsical ukulele folk pop. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, what, are you describing your, your no, songwriting? No, I'm describing, or, yeah. Or Taylor's? Yeah, mine is not whimsical mm. or folky. No, or, and it's and it's somewhat... really poppy. It's like scary blues, ukuleles, But there's, there's diversity in it, too. That's the thing. <laughs> it's it's not like all, all the songs you write have a very ah! you know similar genre all the way through. Like one tune is jazzy. Soaking up wine is very jazzy. Is that how you label that? Yeah, the chord progressions and whatnot, they, they, they have a very sort of old-time jazzy sort of flavor to it. Whereas Cuz I Wanna, totally not, you know, especially the way it's been produced oh, yeah. the, on the latest version, which I don't know if you've heard yet, Taylor. I think I heard it when I was there, or at least <laughs> parts of it. Oh, maybe. Yeah, that's right. It was so good. <laughs> so we're, good. We're quite pleased with it. And, uh, and just between you and us there, and whoever else might watch this in the future, um, <laughs> we may get a video for that. What? Yeah, we yeah. Got this is. I was. I was actually mentioning it to her because Matt was saying that he was looking, looking for other people. Yeah. This is the fellow that I was saying to you that did our traveling song video. Crumb budget productions. It looks really good. What, what? It looks really good. Oh yeah, it does. And that's the uh, that's the thrown together version. Apparently, he's edited a new version because he uh, didn't yeah, realize we link. were going to post that. <laughs> that was the like oh he, within within a week he had a, that back to us and yeah. he spent like a bunch wow. of months editing and we should get a new version soon absolutely so we're looking forward to that that's kind of exciting but yeah that's the thing it's like that what if the music that you write is fairly diverse then how do you how do you d- determine that niche or genre in order to go out and try to find people you know well that's kind of like like i guess from developing products like tangible physical products you have to start with you have to start somewhere. Yeah. And so if you have like 20 songs and four of them are quirky folk pop blues, then you start to focus on that. Right. And then you like carefully, you know, expand what you do um, so people can kind of understand the transition you're making and either like it or dislike it. Mm. And whether, I guess, we're back at the selling out question is like, do you write more to your audience or do you write for yourself right and can you do both yeah that that is the question right yeah. and it's going to be different strokes for different folks for 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 me i haven't written a tune in forever so i have a bad time with lyrics i can write music all day long but i have a hard time with lyrics so you're doing the bulk of the songwriting in our project and uh, and you know you write from where it, where it comes from. Sometimes you're inspired by something that's happened in the world around you, um, and what or, or something in your inner world or whatever. And I don't believe. Correct me if I'm wrong, but I don't believe you've written a tune with somebody else in mind, like with a fan's. Like, um, the one song. I'm sorry, I wrote for the skirmish. That's like the first time. Oh, that, that I, was an exercise. That I, yeah, yeah. That, that I attempted to do that. I still, you know, it's a decent song. There's nothing wrong with it. Mm-hmm. It's just it doesn't really like. Yeah. Hit home or say anything. Do you know about that, Taylor? The song skirmish group on Facebook. We'll no. Set you up with that, it's like a once a week thing where you just come up with a song. Yeah, they pose. They pose a title. And you can okay. interpret that title however you want. And the, the idea is you sit down with your instrument for one hour and you just write and, and, and 
publish and post it. Oh my god, that would be so fun. Uh, yeah, and they, you know, there's no one monitoring you, so if it takes an hour and a half or two hours, then whatever. But <laughs> that's sort of the general guidelines: is here's the title, spend an hour with your instrument, and and record and do a song. it every week. Mm-hmm. That would be a really great exercise. Even if it's a crap song, you've written a song, you're doing it every week, you're getting into the habit of writing. Yeah, yeah, and most I, likely better. I'm actually. like never stopping. Like, I come up with crappy songs every other day. You're yeah. a machine. I love it. <laughs> I need some of that from you ladies. I need to record the songs that I do do, because I, rec- I actually write a fair amount, but none of it gets saved. Mm. You should at least use your little voice recorder Yeah. on your iPhone yeah. there. <laughs> Just for posterity. Mm. And don't forget to title them. Because mine are all dates, so uh, I like go hunting for something, and I have no idea where it is. Uh, that's a good tip. I only usually know what to title something after I've played it live a couple times. Mm. Or until you've gotten a good, a good deal through the, the lyrics. Because that's the first thing that I do, is, is, is pop it out live. As soon as the fin- a song is complete, I'll pop it live, it's like the minute I can. Mm. Mm-hmm. I'll go out that night to an open mic, I'll live stream it if I have to. Yeah. <laughs> Well, that's like my uh, my slave labor song. I think I was going out and I was calling it Recent Graduate. And oh. then somebody would come up after and be like, I love that slave labor song. I'm like, all right. <laughs> that's what we're going to call it. <laughs> that's what it's called now. <laughs> I don't believe I've heard that one. I think I've only heard the feel so far. So I'm looking forward to you sending me all your roughs. Okay. <clears throat> mm-hmm. I am going to try and get those together really soon. I think there's probably like 20 that I would well, put up for consideration. Well, definitely slave labor because it's a good tune. <clears throat> okay, well, we'll check them all out. <laughs> we'll check them all okay. out. And I'll cool. offer my opinion. I'll get her opinion as well. Just bring okay. those back to you, and then you can use that to solidify your okay. opinion. <laughs> Sounds good. Does that work for you? I'm good with that. Yeah. <laughs> nice. Totally. Uh, speaking of which, I still haven't seen you uh, live stream yet. <clears throat> I am going to do that. Oh, yeah? It's part of my new marketing plan. You promise? Uh, yes. All I right. can't guarantee See, I- a timeline on that, but... Oh, I feel yeah. bad about bugging you on that because the other day he he posted live on his own and I was all like, ah, you posted on your own. No, I have to. No, why? <laughs> why did you do that? You set a precedent. Ah. It's not the same without you. So and then I, I Kevin feel you. I'm even terrified of doing it on my own. I am out of my mind with fear about it. <clears throat> Which Maybe we should record awesome. together. We should do a scope Problem together. Solved. Yeah, absolutely. I like this plan. That way I'm scoping without you and yet I'm not alone. Ah, there ah. Go. Yeah, well whatever works for you. I just think I just think we should be live more. I think it's powerful. Like it's a great way to build an audience and to have some connection with people, you know, because you're talking right into the camera and they're texting on the screen. And so it's not yeah. quite the same as what we're doing here on Skype. That's pretty close, you know. Well, it's like gigging without gigging. Yes, exactly. It's, it's kind of perfect. Yeah. Yeah, or busking in the wintertime when you don't want to go and sit on the corner uh, by the bank or the beer store. You can just do it from your living room. When your yeah, instrument totally. does not want you going. <laughs> yeah. Well, it's funny because until Busker came out, you you and I have talked about that. Like I've been doing some indoor busking. Indoor busking. What do you do in the wintertime when you want to go out and play for people not not necessarily a gig just like busking you know yeah and then the busker app came about and that's we broadcast when you were over here uh on yes. busker and on periscope so busker is still a small community right now so we normally get more viewers on periscope because it's a much bigger uh pool of people um but busker is launching for the android platform soon which means there'll be a whole Woo. lot more because it's ios only now but the nice thing right. about Busker, for, for anyone who's watching or listening that doesn't know, is that it's a live streaming app very much like Periscope, except your viewers can tip you real live dollars if they enjoy what uh, what you're up to. Well, real PayPal dollars. Well, PayPal, but you can put them into your Those bank account. They're live dollars doing it. They're real dollars. I pay bills with PayPal. <laughs> so, and I pull money out of PayPal and, and put it in it my into pocket. Cash. Yeah. So yeah, real dollars, real dollars, which is awesome. And the minimum tip is a dollar. The maximum is twenty, at least as it sits right now. And um, and they're rolling out next month um, the ability to sell your merch through. That's it. right, digital or physical products. Yeah. So I'm not entirely sure how they plan to set that up, but the button is there. It's just grayed out. You can't click it yet. But that'll I be awesome. I did a little research into that, and you have to have a distribution set up with like a place like Kunaki or somewhere else. But as long as you have a physical place distribution, they're willing to be your 
your link up for that. Mm. And they've got their own little um, fee. It's like five percent or something like that. Of I'm sure they would. And yeah. Other things, but yeah, it's they've got their own little fee and. But that's fantastic, where you can literally gig. Because what do you do at a gig? You go to a place, you set up all your gear, you play your music for whoever's in the room, and then mm-hmm. you hope that you can sell some CDs, and if you've got T-shirts or whatever, you sell a couple T-shirts. So now, literally, all of those things, without the setting up of your gear, can happen uh, and the, via the live going. stream. And the going. You don't have to go anywhere. You don't have to set up your gear, except your phone on the table, maybe a little tripod or something. And you play your music just like you would. People will filter into the room and just like they would at a bar or whatnot. They can tip you and they can buy shit from you. (laughs) That's awesome. (laughs) This sounds pretty awesome. Yeah. I just wouldn't know what to say. Uh, I feel like to have a conversation, it needs to be like both ways. Well, yeah, because people will, will talk to you via text on the screen, right? Ah, that is assuming you have an audience. And of course, the big fear is what if I go on and there's no one in the room and I'm just sitting here anything. by myself? <laughs> and that's when you start talking to replay watchers. So mm. you, you act as though you are assuming that at least one or two people will find this in a replay. You can guarantee yourself yeah. that at least we will we'll come and watch this yeah. stuff. Well, I'm more comfortable talking to myself than other people. So maybe well, there it could work out for me. <laughs> That'd be perfect. And yeah, like it's it, most of the stuff that comes on screen, you just like so and so joined, and so you try not to butcher the name too badly when you say hello, so and so. Oh yeah, and it's always a handle, not a name. Like why can't you just be fucking Joe? You know, not like ding ding seven three nine eight eleven fifty nine. Because I'm not going to say that. I'm, I might attempt to say it once, just to be polite, and that's it. <laughs> yeah, if your name is something weird. Oh yeah. Just say Mike or Susie, you know? Oh, who was it? It was like Coochie Fan or something like that. And it was like, oh, <laughs> I do not want to be referring to Coochie Fan for the rest of the yeah. afternoon. And I just said it out loud. Damn it. <laughs> but yeah, live stream, live stream, live stream. I think okay. it's awesome. You know what? Maybe I'll do that right after this. I'll do my first one. Oh, yeah. On what, what platform? Well, what? Well, I have an iPad right now, so. So you can use Busker or Periscope. I'm thinking doing Busker. There's other platforms, by the way, but the, the Periscope is the popular one. Now you can do it on Facebook with Facebook Live. Um, you can do it via YouTube as well with YouTube Live. So if you happen to... it's this. I'm only saying these options because sometimes people who, who might be watching this in the future already have an audience on Facebook or already have an audience on YouTube, then it might be wise to stream right to YouTube, right? But yeah. um, but I think uh, uh, Periscope is definitely a, a good place to start and grab Busker as well. And if you ever find yourself in a situation with more than one device, stream with both platforms at the same Maybe time. Maybe that's what I'll do. Yeah, that's what Periscope we try to do. Periscope on my phone. Yeah, Periscope and Busker, typically. Facebook okay. Live hasn't been that consistent for us. Well, A, I don't even have it yet uh, on my update of the app. She does. Uh, I, can, I can go live uh, to my pages Excuse me, but I can't go live personally, like just as Des. Yeah, in order to get the live stuff through Facebook, you have to have an absolutely public profile, which means you need to be a public persona as far as Facebook is concerned in order for you to get that rollout. You've mentioned this, but I don't know where to find that setting. It is when you created your profile, did you say... I want everybody in the world to be able to view my profile, even if they're not my Facebook friend. And if you said, hell no, Facebook does not consider you a public person. But I said, yeah, absolutely. But I'm pretty sure other people who don't have completely public accounts are streaming on Facebook. I'm (laughs) betting you they have more than one account. Mm. And the the account that they're streaming from is a public figure. Well, one way or the other, I don't have it, so... I don't have that option personally, but we've also found that it's been a little bit more bandwidth hoggy. Like uh, we're oh, getting it's brutal. If your bandwidth is not quite a hundred percent, then Facebook Live will start dropping out before Periscope or Busker will. So it tends to be a bit of a, a hog on the bandwidth. But um, but yeah, streaming's great. And the other thing that's cool is well, for sh- all the things we just spoke about as far as streaming goes, you get a live event and all of that fun stuff, interaction. But also, you take the replay, and now you have a YouTube video. You yeah, know, in, and then you can share that YouTube video on your website, and then you can share that blog post to everywhere else in the social media world, and draw traffic back to your website, and you can repurpose that one uh, piece of content 
All right, which takes very little effort. Set your phone on the table, do your thing for a few minutes, say hello, say goodbye, you know, and you're done. <laughs> right? yeah, say, that. oops, I messed up. Yeah, and, and you know what? I'll tell you what, that what I've learned is that uh, uh, that I used to be afraid. My first few broadcasts, I was like, oh, I'm going to play perfectly, and I'm sweating, and oh, shit, people are watching. Oh, there's someone in the room, right? And I realized from watching a lot of other people in the community on Busker and whatnot that that's when it's the best. Is when it's like, oh, I fucked up, or oh, whatever, and I'm laughing about it, and I'm slightly self-deprecating, and I'm being real. Because that's yeah. what people want. They want to see you, like, being real. Not you on the stage with the lights just perfect and everything. It's just... Who are you? This is your living room? Oh, cool. What is that book on the bookshelf back there? You know, like, that's that's what people are interested and in. And I think I, that's I what the YouTube cycling. community is built on. And I think that's why it's it's grown so quickly and so mm. large. Mm. Is yeah. There's these people who aren't, you know, holding themselves to the same expectations as when they're forced to be something. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Back to the sellout. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, and you know what? Different strokes for different folks. If you want to do yeah. the high production value, polished everything, then then that's fine, you know? Yeah. Uh, and uh, and if you want to do the mic in the room and raw three chords in the truth, then that's fine too. <laughs> I don't see why people are even Yeah, I think there's arguing a space about for it. it all. Absolutely. Absolutely. I mean, there's super pop polished Recordings that sell millions of records, so people obviously like that. And then there's there's the opposite as well, you know. So Martha Wainwright. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> so I don't know. I was like, who's that? Don't worry, no one knows you but me. My conclusion, <laughs> basically, on the sellout conversation is there's no such thing unless you're doing something that goes against your own personal integrity. You know. Yeah, if you're not happy with what you're doing and you feel like a sellout, that's a different question. Yeah, but selling your shit is kind of the goal. <laughs> That's not yeah. selling out. <laughs> you know, yeah. right? is, is good. It says a lot of people agree that you liked it. There's uh, nothing wrong with that. No, absolutely. Like, for, for me, I've never felt particularly grounded in one type of music. Mm. And if one is going to sell better, like, I don't think I, I'm a sellout for choosing that avenue. You know what I mean? No, just make more of those because they sell. Yeah. It, that doesn't, also doesn't mean you have to stop making anything else. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. You know, <laughs> if suddenly you wanted to work into like ukulele death metal, that's that's what you should write. Yeah, whatever it is, <laughs> whatever it is, it's calling you next. Exactly, ukulele <laughs> death metal, with a dash of polka. Polka. <laughs> yeah. All right. I, I would love ukulele death polka. <laughs> ukulele death polka. Well, we're gonna have to we're gonna have to fire up the studio here and see what we can see do. See what we can do. <laughs> I'm really Cleaning excited requires, for that. Requires it needs an accordion though. Oh, right. If it's going to be polka, I need an accordion. All right. Well, I don't have an accordion, but I no, might have an accordion sample. Schmidt. Oh, yeah. That's right. <laughs> we Actually, know a guy. Uh, yeah, I know some people that play the accordion. I have a friend that plays the accordion. Yeah. Matt, my crazy friend. Oh, he plays accordion? Yeah, he All plays right. an amazing accordion. Nice. I've never tried one. We are weird. Uh, me and my friend Matt, we are crazy together, and when you get us together, we do awesome things. I made him broke his ankle. <laughs> like that sounds awesome. That, that sounds less than awesome to me, but I don't know. We always get into good fun. We were trying to play hacky sack, and we learned quickly that the stuff that you did when you were 18, you could not do at 35 if you have not done it in like 10 years. <laughs> not without some ramp up, a little yeah, warm up. Yeah, don't attempt a gesture as your first move. It's more of a gesture than a gesture. Oh, yeah. <laughs> so what do you think? Did we cover the uh, the sellout topic? I feel good. You got any last I, thoughts on that there, Taylor? Uh, I don't think so. No, okay. I, I, think, I think we covered everything that... I think that licensing cover, music is the new way to go. Oh, yeah. I'm really excited about looking more into licensing because it wasn't until... I mean, I knew about the concept and a good friend of mine who I used to work with, Brian Weirmeyer, he's been dabbling with that for a few years now and he's had some success. He had a tune in uh, The Young and the Restless and The Ghost Whisperer and some stuff like that, right? So I kind of on the periphery. But when I interviewed Kathy and really got to, to ask somebody questions who knows who, who's in that field of work, uh, that's when the possibilities started... In, you know, the light bulb started going off like, oh shit, this is worth thinking about. <laughs> you know? Well, because there's, there's so much advertising online and video is huge. Yeah. So to get in video ads that are on YouTube, like every video that you watch on YouTube has an ad before it and that yeah. ad has music. Yeah. 
Yeah, and there's even um, we we uh, have our music digitally distributed through CD Baby, and if you use their uh, pro account when you. Uh, submit your album then it also includes their licensing uh, service as well which also includes micro licensing which is kind of neat which is basically uh, there's a lot of people because youtube is so popular now there's a lot of people who are uh, aspiring filmmakers and so forth that are producing like like well produced short films and things like that, and they're distributing them on on YouTube. So right. they're they're not going into theaters necessarily, but nonetheless, they still need to legally have music. And so right. you end up that, that CD Baby will take care of this micro licensing for those kind of uh, clients as well. And that's something I'd never even considered before. I, it never dawned on me that yeah, just YouTubers. That want to legally have use music in their in their Just production. Think about every product that you've ever seen in the supermarket, there is probably a commercial for it. Yeah, pretty much. <laughs> and just 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 the supermarket. Not even getting into iPods or wine or other places. Just just the supermarket when you go through the aisles. How many hundreds of thousands of products do you pass? Every one of them, approximately every six months, wants a new song. Yeah, yeah. And you know my favorite genre of music is supermarket music. I love being <laughs> in the supermarket. I feel this way also. I love to shop. But I don't like to shop for clothes. Just food. Just food. I Just love food. shopping for tasty food. Grocery stores are my favorite place. When I'm sad, that's where I go. Okay, we're and have it's to go probably shopping. the supermarket music. Uh, yeah. You when, so, it, when right? I call you to go shopping, it won't be for shoes. It'll be like, okay, I've got some I money. I need zucchini. We're going to get produce, baby. <laughs> yeah. Come on now. <laughs> I want to give me some salmon and some zucchini. Yeah. Oh, salmon is my favorite food. we got to go check out that salmon. Seriously. Uh, mm. I like salmon. Out of, out of all the fishy fish, I like Thank God. I'm not a fish guy, but I like salmon. Although I will say this, you keep saying I'm not a fish guy, and everything I've ever fed you that has fish in it, you're like, this is really good. I'm like, it's, 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 it's you not, really do like fish. Had it's not a fucking fish. chicken wing, but it's pretty good. <laughs> That's you all I'm saying. You loved the, the calamari. The calamari was pretty that. good, actually. The calamari. It was, it was surprisingly That's good. squid. Yeah, that's 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 most people go okay. I you know I I can eat fish and chips, but this is craziness, <laughs> and he ain't like, that no problem. I don't think I've ever tried calamari because it's it's breaded, right? It is. Oftentimes it is. Yeah, oh, I think yeah. so. It's delicious. <laughs> Not bad. I got to admit, I will give you, you deep that. Deep fry just about anything is good. That's true. Yeah, <laughs> and have something nice to dip it in. Mm. Ugh, lovely. <laughs> <laughs> I love fish. <laughs> All right, Taylor. Well, I guess I guess we've kind of we've kind of talked around the full circle, right? I feel on, good on, on the subject. Yeah. So we'll so we'll cut you loose. But where's a good spot people can go to find out what you're up to? Uh, Functionalaccessories.com yeah. or acouskins.com, which is a c o u s k i n s dot com. Nice. Like acoustic skins without a couple letters. Yeah, yeah. Um, we'll me put personally, in the I need to. Sorry? I said we'll put links in the description wherever we post this. Oh, great. <laughs> and do you have a That'll Facebook page as opposed to just a profile for your music yet? For my music, no. Well, we'll just have to work on that. Can people reach out to you at those two websites? Like, can they link to your Facebook and Twitter and all of that? Yes. Okay, totally. cool. So totally. if someone has, wants to ask you a question or something, they can find you. Yes. And you nice. do have stuff on SoundCloud. I if people do. hunted you down, <laughs> if they hunted for Taylor Murray, they would be able to find the unreleased. She's gonna quickly go to SoundCloud now and delete anything she doesn't like. <laughs> Seriously, <laughs> I didn't know anybody all, even knew about the, the SoundCloud. Let I it guess, all hang out. Yeah, That's what let I other say. people decide what's awesome, <laughs> okay. and then put new stuff up. <laughs> okay, I will do that. I think all I right. have like eight listens total on SoundCloud. Which is just how I like it. There I would go. love it if we posted this and you went back and it was like 30 listens. And be like, what the hell? They're all me. Well, thanks so much for being our absolute first guest on our absolute first video podcast for the Fearless Creative. And thank you for having me. Oh, it's been good. This has we'll been talk, lots of fun. We'll talk soon. I'm sure of it. Okay. In Sounds fact, great. we're going to keep talking right after the, this video ends. Oh, exactly. oh, okay. Yeah, I'm, I'm in a, I'm in a Facebook which happens right away, right about yes now. <laughs>